Hello there. Now today is going to be a little bit interactive and excited. I'm also very, very nervous. Now yesterday on Instagram, I asked all of you, what was the weirdest coffee order you have ever had ordered from you? Or also what is your favorite weird coffee combination? Now today I'm going to be making <laughs> some of those. I'm also going to be rating them. So we're going to see what people are ordering out there. What sort of strange combinations of flavors are out there? And also, are they any good? Because I can say, at least from my experience, I have had ordered from me many combinations combinations that I have initially kind of raised my eyebrows at, but later upon trying them, found out they're delicious. So hopefully we have some of that today. Okay, I have made a nice list of all the recipes we're gonna try. Now with these, people were not being super specific with them. This is a lot of like ingredients or just general drinks. So our goal today is to make these as tasty as possible with the limited information we've been given. Let's get started. No notebook today, but I have the iPad. So somewhat organized still. We're just gonna start off at the top. The first one was given this description. It was a bit weird, but we tried espresso with orange juice and vanilla syrup at school. Some also added milk. The first combination, I could see that being very delicious. However, I have some questions about the secondary addition of milk. However, no judgments will be made until we try this drink, so I have some ingredients for us. Many of you all probably remember when orange juice and espresso was a very, very trendy combination on the internet. We actually did our own little little take on it here on this channel, and that was tasty. However, we can only work with the ingredients we have been recommended and given. So I think the wisest thing to start off with is ice. This very much sounds like it was an iced or cold drink. All right, we'll fill her up. And then we have three ingredients that we're starting with. I have right here a double espresso. I have a nice little combination of vanilla and syrup, otherwise known as vanilla syrup. Duh. <laughs> and then I also have, I have orange juice and it's pulp free. We are doing our best to recreate people's drinks. And my guess is that they were probably not fresh squeezing their orange juice. So we're not going to today. We go with a pretty classic store brand, Simply Orange. Don't make this with pulp, everyone. I have seen people make this drink before with pulp and just, just don't do it. It is not a pleasant tactile experience. I find it very alarming, if anything. My hope here is that we're gonna get kind of like a like an orange creamsicle sort of scenario. I think the addition of vanilla with a good amount of sweetness is gonna do some good things to this combination. Let's try it out. I'm just gonna, gonna eyeball this. Can always add more vanilla later if we need to. We'll start off with about, this is gonna be about half an ounce of vanilla syrup. orange juice next. This is about an eight ounce cup. I have a good amount of ice in there. So my guess is we'll have probably about five ounces or so of orange juice in here. Now, remember with this, we have to leave room for our espresso and also later milk. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now we have our espresso. That was probably about 30 grams or so of espresso. And I suppose you really wanted to, you could just leave it layered like this. However, we're gonna stir. Kind of an intimidating <laughs> combination of colors here. This is something that is not entirely unappealing. However, it's not a color that I find majorly appealing. Let's try it. it smells like orange juice. It is all orange juice in there. That's delicious. <laughs> This is very lovely. It's very good. Orange juice, because it has more solids in it than like water or usually coffee, adds a, a very nice texture to all of this. It's kind of a, a thicker drink than I was expecting. Honestly, I think it tastes a lot better with the vanilla syrup than just orange juice and espresso taste together. Now, I am a little bit concerned about adding milk to this. <laughs> if you add too much acid, if there's too much acidity with milk, you will curdle the milk very, very quickly. And we're not really aiming for anything clarified right now. So my hope is that, and I don't know if this is gonna happen or not, my hope is that we don't curdle the milk by adding it, but let's just go with it. This on its own, lovely. If I was gonna rate just this combination, I would definitely give it like, I feel like this is a strong eight out of 10. That might be a little bit high off the bat. I don't really have any comparison, but eight out of 10 feels right. I have some milk here. Again, I'm just gonna eyeball this. I think less milk rather than more milk is gonna be the way to go. I've got some whole milk. I don't see any curdling happening. Great, this is a little bit more of an appealing color than the, the previous tone we had. That's lovely. I feel like we're off to a very, very good start today. This is wonderful. The milk really doesn't do much except add a lot more like creaminess to it. You don't really taste the milk at all. It's not curdling at all. It's very stable in this combination of espresso and orange juice. It just, it works in this. This is nice. I would also give this a pretty strong eight out of 10. I really think the, the thickness of this drink really, really adds a lot to it. This is very, very much like kind of a, an orange creamsicle flavor. This was very good. Let's move on to our next drink. Now, I have to go prepare some coffee and some espresso for some of the later drinks. So in the meantime, I'll be right back. I wanna give a huge thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. 
As competition season draws closer, I'm getting back into the swing of dialing in and tasting all different types of coffees. It's like a muscle that needs to be worked out, and there's no better way to explore all different types of roast profiles and origins than with Trade. Trade Coffee is a coffee subscription service that makes it easy to discover new coffees and make your best cup at home every day. Trade partners with the nation's top-rated independent roasters to send you the best quality coffee you can get. And whether you know what you like or are new to specialty coffee, Trade has you covered. Right now, I'm brewing this washed Ethiopian coffee from Anodyne Roasters, and it has notes of plum, lemongrass, and lavender. I've been brewing it on the MK Dripper with an input of 15 grams and an output of 250 grams. But if you're ready to get started on your own with Trade, now's a great time, because right now Trade is offering my subscribers a free bag of coffee with any subscription at drinktrade.com mdc. That's drinktrade.com mdc for a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase. And thank you again to Trade for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back. The next drink we have up is not one, in fact, that someone made for themselves, but it was one that was ordered from them. This person says, I once was asked for an espresso with marshmallows on top. Frankly, that sounds awesome. Let's make it. All right, we'll get ourselves a nice, nice little stylish cup here. Now, there is a drink out there called an espresso compana, which is made using espresso, and then it has like whipped cream on top traditionally. Pretty common drink. Uh, it's very, very tasty. So this doesn't seem too far off from that. However, I'm questioning how well the marshmallows are going to like melt into this or whether they're just going to kind of like sit on top <laughs> and you might kind of spoon them out afterwards. I have another double espresso. I need marshmallows. There were many shapes and sizes of marshmallows that I could have gone with. However, I opted for mini marshmallows. I think we have the highest likelihood of these kind of melting and turning into something within the espresso. I also just like the size of them. I'm a team mini marshmallows on the way here. We were given very little instruction. Let's start with four marshmallows. This amount of marshmallows seems somewhat proportional to the amount of espresso that we have. There's not really, really a pretty way to do this. Drop them in. We'll give them a second to kind of marinate in there. I think I'm gonna stir. That seems like like the proper move here. I am expecting at the very least, even if we don't get them fully melted in here, that we're gonna get some nice additional sweetness added into the espresso. Marshmallows are like sugar and gelatin and like, I don't really know what else, it's a lot of sugar. So at the very least, some sweetness and then maybe after you drink your espresso, maybe then you get to like enjoy these kind of like soaked espresso marshmallows. Maybe that's the move here. They've definitely melted a little bit. <laughs> Certainly not all the way. Let's taste. Like try not to bump our nose with the marshmallows. It's not really anything. <laughs> this is like espresso with added obstacles, I would say. My espresso was pretty fresh. This was a pretty high temperature. We don't have a lot of meltage. I would not say the espresso is enhanced with the addition of marshmallows. However, let's fish them out. Let's see if it's perhaps the goal to have the marshmallows at the end. Perhaps the espresso is like, you just drink it and then you get like a nice treat afterwards. I'm trying to figure out the order of operations here. One marshmallow. The marshmallows on their own aren't awful. I guess I'm left feeling a little bit confused about all this. I do not think the addition of these two things together is greater than like the sum of their parts. I think that's how that phrase goes. There's no like to borrow from competition phrases. Very little synergy is found in this drink. Very much feels like two, two distinct ingredients that they put together and boy, can you sure taste those two ingredients very separately. The marshmallows themselves are fine. They're marshmallows soaked in espresso. They aren't bad. It's sweet and bitter and it's, it's okay. I would give this a resound this gets a three out of 10. That feels right. Moving slightly away from coffee, we have something kind of coffee adjacent. This person says, and they don't specify whether it was ordered from them or something they prefer. They say matcha with hot chocolate and jalapenos, which are peppers, by the way. <laughs> Decently spicy peppers. Now, this one is gonna really require some thought on the construction of it. Cause what I think we should do here is make like a matcha, like concentrate, like you would for a matcha latte. Then I think we should add that to chocolate syrup stir it together or in our steamed milk like we would a matcha latte or a hot chocolate to just kind of together. Then we have the jalapenos and it's not clear whether they're like whole or sliced or what to do with them. So I'm thinking maybe we put some jalapenos like slice in with the milk and everything. And then I'm also thinking we like garnish with the jalapenos. I don't know, let's chop some up. Let's kind of like see what we can do here. We'll break out a nice clear glass so you can really, really see what goes on in the cup. Cutting board. and. A jalapeno. I'm not anticipating. We will need more than one of these things. I don't think I'm gonna de-seed it. I think we're just gonna go seeds and all because I think the spice and perhaps the seeds you might get in your sips kind of important to this. I could eat those words, we'll see. We're just gonna give ourselves some nice slices. 
Great, our jalapenos are gonna go in our little cat face plate. Next, we need to make some matcha, matcha bowl and matcha powder. In case anyone doesn't know what matcha is, matcha is like a, a powdered green tea. So very concentrated, it has a really nice kind of earthy green tea, like deep sweet flavor to it. Very, very pleasant. Kind of the more traditional way to drink it is made into essentially like a concentrate. You add hot water to it, you whisk it together, you add a little bit more hot water, and then you can drink it like a tea. Otherwise, how you see it a lot in cafes is turned into a matcha latte. So the way you'll probably see matcha prepared in a cafe, at least most often, is probably in a matcha latte. So you make this, this sort of like concentrate, almost like matcha paste using hot water and matcha powder. And then instead of adding additional water to turn it into more of a tea drink, you will add steamed milk to make something that is really, really pleasant. It's kind of like a, an earthy, like warming drink. You can have it iced if you'd like. You can add honey to it. Very nice. But today we are doing something I've never done. We are adding chocolate and jalapenos. So, hot water, and we whisk. This is the, the Morgan Drinks tea session <laughs> today. Our matcha is now ready. Now, I have chocolate, and I think I'm gonna add a pretty standard amount that I would for a regular hot chocolate. Matcha um, on its own is not sweet, so we're not getting any additional sweetness from this. I think we need to rely on the chocolate here. It's gonna do a lot of legwork, <laughs> I think, in this drink. That seems like a lot. We'll start there. It's a pretty semi-sweet chocolate though, so hopefully we'll have a nice, a nice pairing here. Let's put the matcha in. Now at this point, I think we really need to add the jalapenos. I think we need to release some of that spice and liquid that's in the jalapenos into our base here of this drink. And once more, we're gonna go with a nice even number. I think four, four seems right. Four slices here. One, two, three, four. Let's stir. Very curious as to what the what the final color of this drink is gonna be because the sludge I'm creating at the bottom here certainly is taking on a swampy color to it. Doesn't smell awesome, but again, with the addition of milk, that could change. I'm gonna let you hang out with this concoction we've made. I'm gonna go steam some milk. Let's add milk to this. We need to stir halfway here. That's certainly a color. I don't know, it almost smells buttery right now. I don't know. I don't know about the jalapenos in this. Now we will simply garnish with one on top. There we go. The color is <laughs> less dramatic than I was thinking. It's turned into kind of an interesting sandy green, I would describe it as. It's like kind of a, a vegetal beach that we have going on here. And now as our garnishing jalapeno sinks to the bottom, let's take a sip. I don't really want to, I'll be totally honest. Ooh, there is a good bit of spice to that. <laughs> More so than any flavor you get from the jalapenos immediately on your lips. You can kind of feel that like tingling burn, which I'm a fan of spicy things. It's not bad. It's just a little bit unexpected when paired with the texture of like steamed milk. It is an adventure. I feel like I just went through like the five stages of grief <laughs> in one sip. It is quite spicy, very spicy. That might've been my fault. The amount of jalapenos that I would put in guacamole turns out maybe you shouldn't put that same amount into one singular drink. Now you can see quite a bit of separation happening here. We have what looks like most of the hot chocolate and then most of the matcha. The two flavors together are really being just blown out by the jalapenos. However, if I can like dig down beneath that spice that I'm feeling, they don't taste awesome together. I don't think these two really complement each other that much. Now, I will say that I have had white chocolate and matcha before. Those two go very well together. However, I think like darker chocolates and matcha like together can be very, very tricky to balance. This was an experience and it's an experience that I would pretty comfortably rate. I'll give this like a two and a half. <laughs> this one I have questions about. Okay, let's move on to something hopefully a little bit more palatable. The next one we have is matcha with a double espresso. Let's make some more matcha. I'm gonna make the assumption that by matcha, they are meaning matcha latte because a matcha with added espresso is something that I've actually served a decent amount. I remember this drink, this like dirty matcha for lack of a better term, cropping up in the cafe probably about like five years ago. I wanna say I remember like matcha really, really got popular in cafes and then like all of a sudden just one day it seemed like people were adding shots to it without really like thinking about it and so I was always really curious what the origins of adding espresso to matcha were because my head at the time even a little bit now these are two really delicious drinks that don't always don't always pair the way people think they're gonna pair I'm always curious if it was like a Starbucks scenario or like some sort of very large company creating this flavor combination that was then trickling down into smaller cafes so if you watching have any information on the origins of espresso added to matcha, please let me know. I am uh, ready and willing to be educated on this because it's a, it's a question I've had for a very, very long time. The internet doesn't seem to give me any answers, so crowdsourcing to you. We have some matcha and now we need a cup. We'll use a nice eight ounce matcha in. I have some espresso. Again, we are getting to this kind of like camo swamp color, inevitable with these two drinks. 
this color is not so unappealing. In fact, on the side at least, this looks like a pretty standard matcha. Let's taste. Overall, this is decently pleasant. This is kind of an interesting flavor combination because at this point, there's not much like balancing sweetness to this, I suppose. We have matcha, which is very earthy. Um, it is like very concentrated green tea. So all of those flavors you get in green tea have just been like dialed up to 100. You also have espresso, which is for the most part, a, a pretty acidic, often perceived as like kind of bitter drink. It's very punchy. It's a very, very strong flavor. Those two in combination kind of cancel each other out in a weird way. Like you don't really taste distinct matcha. You also don't taste distinct espresso. It's just kind of like created one new flavor. That's just kind of like this mellow, like lightly bitter, I don't know, lightly bitter, like warming beverage. It's, it's decent hot. I don't think I would like this cold nearly as much as I do hot. I do think this combination needs a little bit of sweetness just to balance it a little bit just to kind of like bring out potentially a little bit more brightness out of all these flavors so i think honey would be a lovely addition to this but on its own not so bad i would gladly sip this over the last thing that we made i'll give this a six out of ten that feels right we are on to our second to last drink this one says hot coffee with oj and caramel syrup i just don't really <laughs> this year we are really stuck on adding orange juice <laughs> to every coffee drink we're making hot coffee oj caramel syrup we can make that three ingredients we need to figure out these proportions let's start with our syrup i really like caramel as a sweetness and i think caramel and coffee go great together it's dark caramelized sugar and coffee which is kind of the same thing but with coffee beans and it's just it's lovely i don't think we need a lot that is probably i would say that is like less than a quarter ounce of caramel syrup let's go hot coffee next i think this is going to be our primary base ingredient about four ounces of coffee and we stir a lot of this video is just stirring things let's taste let's see where our sweetness is at not too sweet, very, very light. Still get a lot of that acidity, brightness from the coffee. We get just a hint of sweetness underneath. That's what I wanted. We have our orange juice. I'm gonna go very light on this. I think giving it just like a little bit of that kind of like acidity, a little bit of that like kick is what we're looking for. I don't think we're doing like a one-to-one -one thing here. Just a dash. Orange juice is such an amazingly distinct smell. It just demolishes everything else. No longer does this room smell like coffee. It just smells like orange juice and we taste. Well, I certainly wouldn't put more orange juice in that. There is something, something wrong about hot orange juice. I'm just gonna put that out there as a statement that is very factual to me. It's just not a, not a flavor profile that I want to experience warm, I don't think. In fact, I would like it as cold as possible. The orange juice does not add anything. Unlike the coffee and the caramel, which combine very well and kind of complement each other, the orange juice just kind of is like a third wheel that has joined the party and is not integrating into this conversation. This was about 30 times better before I I added orange juice to it. And I don't think the addition of more orange juice will do much. And I think any less orange juice will no longer be able to like count it as an ingredient. Also, I would rate this like a one on the visually interesting scale. Flavor wise though, I'd give this like, like a four. It's not like outright offensive to the palate. It's not great for sure, but it, it's like, it's fine. It's doable. I could sip this some more and not be entirely unhappy. I think we have one last drink to make. I feel like we've had some, some duds here. So I'm, I'm excited for this last one to hopefully, hopefully be a little bit better. I, I have hopes for this. This last one we have is an apple cider latte in which the person gives instructions, which thank you so much. I didn't ask for instructions, so I don't fault anyone for not giving me them, but this person gave instructions. And so I think we can pretty closely replicate it. Apple cider latte where half the milk was replaced with cider. They say the texture is a bit weird, but it tasted pretty good. An apple cider latte sounds amazing. Let me go get the ingredients. Pretty simple. We have a double espresso. We have a pitcher filled with about half the amount of milk that I would usually use for a latte. And we have some apple cider. I really want this to taste good. First of all, I love apple cider. Second of all, the flavors that you will find in apple cider are very nice. They go very well into like nice wintry warming beverages. So here's hoping they go nicely with some coffee and milk. I suppose we can't forget that the milk is added. I think the most curious part of this, and it was touched on by the person that submitted this, will be how this steams and textures. Because since half of this is no longer milk, we don't have the same amount of like fats and proteins and all that stuff that holds air really nicely when you steam it. So we might end up with something that is a little bit, a little bit looser, a little more watery than usual, but tastes good. What more can you ask for? You can ask for a lot more. Let's be very clear. But today I think we're making do with what we have. We'll use this. We'll just add our espresso already in there. We'll see you soon. Seems to have steamed up all right. 
Ooh, you can already tell there is some separation between that foam on top and the liquid at the bottom. They were right. That was certainly, at least initially, an interesting texture to work with. Smell-wise, smells fantastic. The smell of coffee and apple cider, great. Zero complaints there. Now, I've spilled some down the side. Let's clean that up. I feel like we haven't talked about Morgan Spills coffee in a while, but present and accounted for. It's fine, we'll just leave it. Let's taste. This is good. This is this is a good way to end the day. I highly recommend you do this. Albeit the texture is a little bit weird. <laughs> kind of similarly to what sometimes happens when you make a chai latte in which you're doing like half milk and then half chai like liquid concentrate. It's a little bit harder for this amount of liquid to like hold air. So you get a good amount of separation between the what I'm just gonna call hot milk, which is just a very loose, regular milk-like texture, and then that micro foam and steam that you're adding to it. Good amount of separation. The steam is like just kind of sitting on top. It's not a homogenous texture all the way down, like you would like with a latte. But that aside, flavor-wise, this is delicious. <laughs> I am a very big fan of this. Now, I think you could do this one step further by adding the addition of additional spices, is what I was about to say. However, I think you could add maybe some cinnamon and cloves and nutmeg, possibly steep those in the milk or in the apple cider or do something a little bit more interesting on the spice side of it all. That would be even more lovely. But as it is, simply doing half and half of milk and apple cider, steaming it with some espresso, it's a very good combination. And I'm very happy that we ended with this one because I'm gonna give this a very strong nine out of 10. I think this is my favorite out of all of them. Now, a huge thank you to everyone who submitted Submitted interesting and weird coffee recipes that you have run into either from ordering or from yourself today. This was a lot of fun to kind of sort through and see what everyone likes. I hope this was fun for you. So if you here on YouTube have any interesting coffee combinations that you've run into, please leave them down below. And I would love to do a second one of these someday when we have some more combinations to work from. And I'll kind of open it up like I did with this one. This can be just coffee adjacent drinks. So something you would find basically in a cafe is what I'm looking for. Like with the matcha, it's not a coffee drink, but you'll find it in a cafe most of the time. I'm done talking and I'm very excited to go drink the rest of this. So I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee. You can find me here on YouTube once a week, plus lots of YouTube shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. I had a good time. I hope you also had a good time and I hope you, you learned something, whatever that might be. I will see you all next time. Have a good week. Bye everyone. It's really bothering me that there's just like this mess on the counter, so. Okay, now I'll see you all later. Goodbye.